The deep front line is made up of muscles, but you should consider these muscles to be completely different animals in comparison to the ones you're familiar with. Muscles on the outside of your body, they're big and they're showy. They bulge and they help you move heavy objects. They contract hard and then they need to rest. They're like sprinters. The muscles that are deep inside your body, the muscles of the deep front line, they're completely different. They're small and they're stringy. They're designed to engage and stabilize your joints so that when you use these big powerful muscles, you don't get thrown out of alignment, that you can safely contract yourself, these muscles with 100% power and not worry about hurting yourself. They are the unsung heroes that allow you to do impressive things like running, jumping, and sprinting, and lifting heavy weights, and without which these activities would only make you injured. When muscles contract in the outside of the body, they contract hard, and then they need to rest. The muscles of your deep front line, however, they don't get that luxury. They're marathon runners. They contract and they stay switched on all day, every day, maintaining your stability and alignment in all situations. Because if they're not engaged, well then you don't have good posture and good alignment and you're likely to get here injured. The reason that they're able to stay on all day, the reason they have such great stamina, the reason they're marathon runners, is because these muscles are made up of primarily fascia. Fascia is a completely different substance. It doesn't so much initiate movement like a muscle can, as it likes to absorb load and then reverse that energy into a spring. So think of a spring or a rubber band like this. When your fascia is in good alignment and your foot lands, the muscles and the fascia in the deep front line at the back of your calf, it's gonna absorb the load of your foot landing. And as it does this, as it absorbs more load, it actually becomes more stable and it becomes more rigid. And this allows you to remain in good alignment Importantly though, as it's remaining in good alignment, it's storing this energy. So it can now reverse it and it can create really effortless momentum. And this is the key to really springy athletes and really good athletes. They're just storing the energy of their foot striking the ground and then bouncing back. And so stride to stride, their feet are turning into trampolines and they're just bouncing along. If you haven't guessed already, OP patients aren't exactly doing this. They're not able to store energy in their deep front line. They're not able to maintain their alignment. So they're relying on their muscles to brace and contract to try and stabilize and hold themselves steady. And of course, they have to rely on contracting and relaxing, contracting and relaxing. So their movements become rigid and juddery. And the key to fixing OP is trying to get out of this pattern. Because the more you're relying on your muscles, particularly your adductors, to continually brace and contract and relax, the more tired they're getting, the more fatigued they're getting, the more dysfunctional they're getting, and obviously, the worse your OP is getting. And if you can reverse this, if you can start to rely on your deep front line and your fascial spring, well then you can start to become a more effortless athlete who doesn't have OP. Hey there. That video was probably really complicated. OP is really complicated. So why don't you let me explain it to you in person? Book in for a free 20 minute Skype consult. I can assess you tell you what OP is, you can ask me as many questions as you like, we can go into detail about the Skype process and how it works, and we can start working on the things that you need to do to fix your OP and get back to your life. So please, book in for a free session, it's completely obligation free, and let's get started.